I'm here to present a presentation actually by my PhD students, Asma and Bazu. Uh, both of them have a visa issue, they cannot come. Uh, they just uh, received a master degree this summer. So this work is one of the research topic funded by NSF PASAP ERC uh, project. And the PI is Dr. Kotai here in the audience. Um, a little bit of overview about the research topics in my group. Um, we are working on developing micro and the nano structures and the integrating functional nanomaterials on those structures for mainly uh, miniaturized energy and the power systems application and the biosensing application. So one of the platforms we use, we call the carbon maps. We developed the carbon maps almost like 20 years ago when I was in UC Irvine working with Mark Madhu. And uh, that, that platform is based on pyrolyte uh, photoresist carbon. We can make a high aspect ratio carbon micropillar arrays. And uh, using this type of uh, carbon micropillar arrays, we achieve the uh, first generation 3D micro batteries. And uh, um, over the years, we work on different energy, energy and the power devices, such as uh, on chip supercapacitors, uh, micro biofuel cells, uh, hybrid lease amount capacitors, and recently we are working on a fraction of supercapacitors, all based on the uh, MIMS structure. And at the meantime, we also develop uh, um, high performance electrode materials and integrate to those microstructures, um, including some of the transition metal side materials and uh, 2D materials like graphene, phosphorine by various uh, um, approach, for example, electrostatic spray deposition, electro spinning, and the bipolar electrochemistry. We could use those approach to do in situ exfoliation, deposition, and the reduction of 2D materials and assemble directly on the uh, microstructures. So back to the for this presentation, um, my students was uh, uh, working on developing a uh, pulse waveform uh, detection based on the pressure sensors. So the major concern is about uh, the cardiovascular disease. Uh, I will just quickly skip this uh, background. But uh, for the conventional uh, blood pressure measurement, uh, including invasive and non-invasive uh, blood pressure measurement, they both have limitations, such as uh, you know um, the procedure is complicated. You need the doctor uh, citing. Uh, you have to send the patient to the doctor's office, and uh, we are targeting the uh, carfless 24/7 uh, blood pressure monitoring device. So um, we all know the smartwatch, those kind of uh, device is based on the TPG and the TPG usually cannot give you a lot of details about the you know, peaks uh, for the pulse waveform. Um, especially there's uh, three distinguished peaks on the pulse waveform. Um, for the PPG sensor, usually it has a hard time to to do the pulse waveform detection, but it's good for the uh, heartbeat detection. So from the pulse waveform, we can actually get a lot of uh, information, especially by looking at the peak positions, intensity ratios of each peak. Uh, we can predict, uh, you know, artery stiffness, uh, you, you know, some of the heart failure mechanism may be involved to muscle and the viral failure. So the goal is that we have to have a sensitive detector to collect those information. So the three peaks is our targeting. So we looked into different sensing mechanisms, including first like optical uh, impedance uh, mechanisms, but uh, we select actually um, more like mechanical pressure sensor mechanisms. 
especially in my group, we are focusing on capacitive sensor and the resistive sensor. So we are trying to achieve high, selective, uh, high sensitivity, linear sensing range and the more broad range and the faster response time and the uh, higher signal to noise ratio. So for the capacitive sensor and the resistive sensor, they both have a, a pretty good advantage. So we can uh, you know, use a very simple and a compact uh, circuit design. And uh, usually they have a much lower power consumption and the lower noise level, and uh, we can achieve high pressure sensitivity. So um, that's a target of our work. So how to achieve this? So we have a design called the multimodal sensor design. Um, so the uh, in in this sensor design, we com combine piezoelectric, piezoresistive, and uh, capacitive sensors all together in one design. So basically, at the top layer, you can see we have a sensor arrays, resistive sensor arrays, uh, just like a screen sensors, and in between we have a capacitive sensors. And we also have, uh, you know, in between have the uh, piezo resistive sensors. So uh, during the um, this project, we have been focusing on different tasks. So we did the modeling, for example, uh, trying to identify what's the best design for the capacitive sensors based on those, uh, you know, uh, PD, PD, uh, PDMS uh, parameter shape. Arrays, and we also have the um, fabrication different uh, element. For example, the individual sensor component, including the uh, resistive sensor, capacitive sensors. And currently, we are trying to integrate in, uh, all the components together. But at the meantime, we also fabricate a, a test bed to simulate and. Uh, generate synthetic uh, parse waveform in order to better calibrate uh, our sensors. So this slide I'll show you the, the mechanical test bed. We made a very cost effective test bed uh, by just uh, basically translating the movement like a screw movement into the uh, linear movement. Then we can add the pressure to the sensor, then calibrate the commercial sensors, and uh, also our own uh, uh, developed sensors. So here, we, for the data acquisition, we just use the Arduino Nano, and the, we have very cheap stepper motor encoder assembly together. It's less than fifty dollars uh, compared to typical commercial like a, a force meter. It's about five thousand dollars. And this system also has a benefit. We can uh, generate the uh, artificial pulse waveform with uh, you know different intensities of different different peaks, different ratios, and with different time constants. And we verified this test bed using you know three or four different commercial pressure sensors, and it's pretty effective. And the cyclability. Uh, we test up to 10,000 cycles, it's still pretty good. And the, um, the, the response time we achieve is about uh, four milliseconds. So for the different uh, individual sensors, first I like look into the piezo resistive mode. So we have the one sensor is based on just using graphene nanoplatelet. Um, uh, uh, using the liquid transfer process and put it on the micro pattern substrate, and this micro pattern substrate is from pattern is from the sandpaper. We use the PDMS to translate to the uh, to the roughness to the PDMS. Then we send the sensors using the you know uh, carbon close based flexible uh, inter digital electrode. And uh, this sensor actually gives you pretty good, uh, uh, good range of pressure and uh, good uh, uh, sensitivity. So we have about uh, 0 0.0004 uh, per kilopascal sensitivity uh, at a lower pressure range. 
and we can further improve this because this is really a cheaper approach, very easy to synthesize. And we also use this sensor to generate uh, most code. For example, this sensor, a student generate sensor uh, work using, using this as a most code generator. And for the piezo-resistive mode, um, so my student did a, a simulation using a finite element analysis, uh, COMSO software. And uh, we trying to uh, we are trying to understand the different shape, different density, and even the conductivity of the materials, uh, how they affect the uh, typical uh, performance sensitivity of the uh, piezo resistive sensor. And the way identify the typical like a micro pyramid shape of sensors will give pretty good linear performance. So then we synthesize the uh, piezo resistive sensors using the PDMS micro pyramid mode. So this is through the photolithography and the etching process to uh, etch the silicon substrate and then using PDMS to make the pyramid uh, sensing layer. So we compare this sensor with other sensors, for example, the commercial sensors. Um, and uh, we also have a sensor uh, using micro, uh, mac, uh, mac carbon nanotube based on the flexible substrate. We made some initial sensor. Then this is a micro pyramid uh, based uh, uh, piezo resistive sensor. We have a gold layer as a current collector. So this sensor gave pretty good uh, current value. So we don't need to use a very uh, high, high sensitivity. Uh, thousand meter. We can use a simple cheap thousand meter to to do the measurement. So the for the capacity sensor, uh, one sensor we use uh, just a um, template uh, method. We use the uh, my student use the actual PDMS mixed with uh, sugar particles, then dissolve the sugar particles. Then we can create this porous uh, composite layer. So using this composite layer add to conductive layer, we can make a very simple capacitive sensors. And uh, you can see the performance of this capacitive sensor. Um, very luckily, even it's a very simple process, we can distinguish all the three peaks and uh, um, we can use this as a, you know, a, not only, uh, to mirror the parse waveform. We can also use it for e-skin or touch screen different applications. For example, the mouse, mouse code and the, um, for the robotic, uh, software robotic application, we can use this uh, capacity of sensors for various applications. Another capacity mode Capacity sensor we made is actually based on tissue papers. So since my students, um, you know, pandem pandemic uh, generation students, they just try to do anything in the lab, try to make the flexible device using cheap materials. So they made this um, typical tissue based <laughs> sensors and they just custom measured. Um, I always complain. I said, why you guys don't want to use the lithography, clean room, whatever approach, but uh, they have their way to do research. I'm happy to see they can always uh, distinguish the three peaks. And uh, they also, you know, try to mirror their own, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> parts of waveform. And, uh, you know, for the traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, they usually mirror the prior on different locations. So they can generate all this uh, parse waveform at different locations on their arms. And this is actually one of the video, I believe. You can see this is the Asmo. He's marrying his own parse waveform.
and he's also move, uh, try to move his fingers and uh, you know jumping running to to trying to test his pressure sensors and uh, at a different like a uh, finger position he can all um, see the three peak that's our goal so currently we are trying to put all these sensors together so we'll have a capacitive layer resistive layer screen sensor and the pigeon resistive sensing layer so this is the uh, first generation design it's a layer by layer structure and uh, we are trying to use two sensors simultaneously uh, simultaneously uh, this is our test bed you can see this uh, movement the motor is moving so we synthesize the pass waveform then we did the detection so we have a both capacitive sensor and uh, residual sensor together and this is a very initial <laughs> result uh, but it's from the you know students just got a master degree so I want to acknowledge uh, that passes up ERC. Um, they found actually as um, you know, a study here. And uh, we also want to acknowledge FIU. Uh, so Bazoo's uh, fellowship is from FIU TA and some other EDA DYF fellowship. And I also want to thank the, you know, the uh, shared facility in FIU. And uh, I'm moving to University of Miami from August 15th. So we are hiring, we are hiring postdoc and the graduate students. Thank you.